So hello friends welcome back to the channel today in this video I am going to review the color OS for Redmi Note 9 Pro, Pro Max, Redmi Note 9 S, Poco M2 Pro and Redmi Note 10 Lite. So today I am going to give you a full review of this port for these devices so let's get started. So by default you get this wallpaper and you get that animation that I showed in the shots but currently it is not working but when you set up this ROM the wallpaper will work so first of all this is the quick settings this is exactly what we see in ColorOS and these are the default tiles so first of all let's go to settings and let's see what we have so in the first tile we have essence and in essence we have the features that we get in custom roms like unlimited photo storage and unlock higher fps in games so these are the settings and yes this works really fine and in google photos we have a problem that is play store uncertified so when i go to play store and go to here you can see the device is not certified although you can fix this easily by using the modules through magisk or kernel issue but changing the kernel is not recommended in this rom because that that may give you some problems maybe boot loop or something like that and here you can see when i open photos it it shows this pixel can backup unlimited photos and videos that means the proof is working and also the rom is little bit jittery so if you want a smoother performance that this rom may not be a choice for you although the gaming performance is top notch so you may give it a try if you are a gamer or if you do gaming a lot so let's go to the about and in about device you can see the oneplus logo although our device is not oneplus and the device names that is redmi note 9 s note 9 pro or note 10 Lite, and it's recognized my device as one of these and the color is version is color is 15 and the device name is redmi note 9 s note 9 pro or note 10 Lite. the consumed storage is 25 gb almost 26 the processor is 720 and all are just how it is and we have performance booster so you have to agree the phone manager just like we do in realme ui and this is the performance booster and in performance booster we get ram vitalization rom vitalization and cpu vitalization and we have ram and in ram i think yes we get the ram expansion so you can extend the ram up to 2 gb or 4 gb so this is basically what uses your internal storage as virtual ram and if we go to ram optimization the option is not working ram usage is normal so it says you to reboot if you use these options however we get the model right here the display size that's it and if i click on three dots i can share this like it will be shared as an image so that's a good thing now in system and update we have software update and yes in this point i will mention that do not keep on the automatic update or automatic download because that will give you problems because this build of ColorOS is only made for our device I mean ported for our device so if you update that ROM then this will definitely give you errors the device may not boot or something like that then we have system navigation and in system navigation we get all the options like circle to search and switch to previous app mistouch prevention etc so let's test the circle to search you have to just hold on the navigation bar and the circle to search works like this so yeah it's working just like pixel os or any pixel based roms then we have these three options hide gesture guide bar which is basically the gesture pill i guess then vibrate on back button then switch to previous app etc and also you can use the three button navigation as you can see then we have the language keyboard and input method date and time reset phone repair phone and the developer option and the developer option looks like this we have all the options that we get in custom roms so you can see the rom is pretty slow i will say then 
if i go to user and account you can see this ui and it shows the current signed in account then we have ai so in ai we get ai related features like ai writer air voice brino touch brino suggestions so what is brino suggestions it is smart reminders so you will get all the information from here then we have brino touch i don't know what brino touch is so it is basically something like two finger touch or something like that if i turn on the brino touch then it pops up like this so i think it works then we have ai writer and ai voice so it generates content for you based on your screen content so just like circle to search if you i think select something it will generate some content for you then in ai voice it will automatically open ai voice for calls and meeting in voip apps such as wechat qq and tencent meeting so yeah in personal info and references we get these settings so we get the android auto i guess and i don't know why it automatically turned off so it automatically learns your personal information including work and home address commuting times wi-fi networks and bed times and we have bus metro taxi drive etc so i think it's just like android auto specifically made for oneplus devices and in ai service engine we get the automatically download and update over wi-fi so it will basically update the ai model i think so that's it and if i move above we have the battery so i did not notice any excessive battery drain or something the battery backup is just like custom roms it's pretty good and we have rapid charging and if i turn it on the rapid charging will work although it is not slow as i noticed then we have the battery mode so i cannot see any performance mode just like we get in realme ui we only have power saving mode and super power saving mode Maybe in balanced mode when needed, the battery will push maximum power to the SOC. Now we have apps and in apps we have app cloner. So you can clone any apps that you want just like Instagram, WhatsApp or Facebook. Then we have default apps and we have app management. Then we have recover system apps. So in case if you uninstall your system apps, you will be able to recover them directly from here. So that's a good feature. although. If someone uninstalls some system apps, then he must know the consequences. Then we have auto launch and we have digital well-being and family care. So it every time asks for permission. So make sure to read the permissions that it is requiring. Then we have sound and vibrations and in sound and vibration we have three modes. But we don't get the slider otherwise it would work. In notification and quick settings. We get these settings and if i go to status bar we have real-time traffic indicator it will be turned off by default you have to ma manually turn it on then we have battery style battery percentage notification icon etc then in quick settings we get split and classic so currently the quick setting is like this and if i choose the split it will be like this and i think it's quite better than the classic and it looks a little bit like samsung's one ui and i think it's good uh, then we have the more settings and in more settings we have these settings now in display and brightness we have the brightness slider then we have night mode dark mode then we have light mode dark mode scheduled dark mode and eye comfort and sleep let me test the eye comfort so when i turn on the eye comfort but the thing is it automatically adjusts the eye comfort depending on your surrounding so currently here we have a lot of light that's why it is not adjusting that much but it will work according to your surroundings so that's a good feature then we have adaptive tone that automatically adjusts the screen color temperature based on ambient lighting so it's almost the same options then you have auto rotate font and display size now in wallpaper and style we get this ui you can choose various types of wallpapers so let me try this one and see the lock screen it looks like this you can see so it's basically the wallpaper the game is not included in the uh, in the clock it's basically the wallpaper although it looks cool you can see we have another one that looks like hyper os but it's basically included in the wallpaper and i think we can uh, we can adjust it so that's a great feature 
so yeah it's kind of like hyper os but a little different and we have more options like always on display wallpaper font icons and in color you can customize the accent colors then we have the edge lighting that's good for amoled displays so let's keep it off now moving on we have connection and sharing and in connection and sharing we have vpn personal hotspot private dns my devices oneplus share multi screen contain connect skin cast pin and print and quick connect then in mobile network we have data usage i'm not using any sims so it is not showing any sim then o roaming and yeah that's it we are back in the essence and in essence you know what there is so this is for the settings now talking about the stock applications there is very minimal applications in the rom the antutu uh, benchmark application and the bgmi install is installed by me and i also installed the cpu throttling test the photos is installed by me so all these other applications are pre-installed like the messages phone or phone manager i mean to say that the most essential apps are pre-installed there is no bloatwares or something like that so let me show you the benchmark scores so in antutu i got 3,96,330 which is a great score in my point of view because i have only 4 gb of ram in my device and the soc is really old for now so considering that fact those facts the score is really good and it was tested in default mode i did not use any performance boost mode or gaming mode like that although this 3d application i mean the graphics application was automatically added to the game space so that's a thing to consider now let me show you the throttling test so this was the throttling test result so you can see it comes out great there is no cpu thermal throttling detected and i tested it for default 20 threads and the performance is really good and there is a bug of the rotating icon you can see when i try to rotate the screen let me try this in the google app it comes right here although it should be in the corner so that's a minor bug that will not bother you i guess so then we have the leica camera the miui leica camera and we have all these modes you can download them and use them and in video mode we have 1080p 60fps and 4k 30fps i guess so we don't have the 4k we have 720 and full hd i did not know that and 60 fps is working fine then we have aspect ratio ai camera etc all the things that we get in leica camera then we have the pro mode and in pro mode i don't think we can change the lens i mean the sensor then we have the night mode and in more if i go to edit we don't have much options and i don't think we have the slow mo slow motion camera so in video mode if i drop down the menu and i can see it's already not responding so let me close this app and open again so yeah now it's working uh, so in video mode we have these options so yes we don't get the slow mo if you know that it works in any other corner of the application let me know in the comment section so yeah these are the stock applications and i already showed you the qa styles and one thing that you may already noticed the rom is little bit jittery although that's not a major thing because this is a ported rom not meant to work on red note 9 pro or any other miato devices although you can see the animations are pretty good considering a 60 hertz display the animations are not that bad although sometimes you will get jitters in the ui that's it so talking about the installation before installing this rom make sure you have a backup of all your data and then check that the file is present in your internal storage just like it is in my case and then make sure you have this recovery installed and it is also mentioned in the post then remove the lock screen from security and privacy so i have that recovery installed in my phone so i will directly reboot into recovery and you can flash this rom both from a b1 and a b2 based recovery so that's an added advantage so i have the rom in 
the downloads folder so first of all wipe Dalby cache data then swipe and don't select internal storage otherwise you will not have the rom in your internal storage now select the rom and before flashing the rom optionally you can flash the firmware but i'm not doing that so i will directly flash the rom and guys the rom size is 4 gigs which is more than other custom roms so it will definitely take more time than other roms so make sure to wait for it so when the flashing is complete go to home go to format data type yes now click on reboot system although when you flash this rom and format data and go to reboot into system you will see that it shows no os installed although you have to avoid that because that's a bug only because this is a ported rom so this is how you can install the rom on your device and if you get to know anything from this video make sure to like this video and if you are new to my channel make sure to subscribe to this channel i will see you next time bye bye